Right now, pomp and pageantry across the pond as Charles III is formally proclaimed King of England. We are live in London, plus this. We are angry, we want answers. Outraged at a Manhattan NYCHA housing after the city says tests that show there was arsenic in the water were wrong, what some people are now demanding. And happening today, the city's Labor Day parade returns after a pandemic hiatus. We are live with top politicians who are expected to march along with the labor unions. Good morning and welcome to Weekend Today in New York. On this Saturday, September 10th, I'm Pat Battle in New York. And I'm Gus Rosendale here in London. Hi, Pat. Hello, everyone. Uh, this morning, we're seeing a real historical moment. King Charles III formally proclaimed as king. We will have more on that ceremony. Also talk to you about the ongoing mourning of Queen Elizabeth II. So it is the end of an era here, the start of a new one. And we will have complete coverage as we move along here, Pat. I know we're also transitioning to the weather as well back in New York. Pat, kind of crisp here. I wonder how it's doing there. Yeah, I think there, you had a few sprinkles over there as well. We're expecting some early in the week, Gus. So let's get a check of the forecast with Storm Team 4's Violet Yas. Yes, certainly a cool start here as well, but we are expecting those temperatures to rebound. We're at 67 degrees right now in the 50s, far north and west early this morning. Our dew point 56, so a nice dry air mass. But you can see after a cool start, those temperatures are not going to have an issue rebounding into the mid-80s. Plenty of sunshine in the forecast as well today, so certainly still feeling very much so like summer, even though we're sort of in the swing of fall almost and also into football season. Now, if you are going to enjoy the day at some of our shore points, whether it's in New Jersey or out across Long Island, conditions will be very nice. 80 degrees with sunshine in Southampton, 77 in Fire Island. But today is best to enjoy on the sand. We're seeing a very high risk of rip current along with very high surf, so not the best day to be getting into the water. And believe it or not, this thanks to very distant Hurricane Earl out in the northern Atlantic. So I do think today's going to be the better day of the weekend. We're tracking some rain on the way for Sunday afternoon. We're going to time that all out for you hour by hour. That's coming up in just a couple of minutes. Pat. Okay, bye. Thank you. We're going to go back to Gus in London now. And within the past few hours, King Charles III was formally proclaimed king in an historic ceremony at St. James Palace. Gus joins us live now from London with the details on that and what's to come. Good morning, Gus. Good morning, Pat. This is a ceremony that is very much steeped in tradition, the formal proclamation of King Charles III as king. It is worth noting he automatically assumed that title when his mother passed away. This is more sort of a, a formal declaration. And I want to show you some video of the public aspect of this ceremony that took place just a short while ago. You can hear the proclamation being made outside the balcony of St. James Palace. This is the public aspect of this ceremony. It began earlier this morning around 10 a.m. our time. That's 5 a.m. in New York. A two-part uh, event. First, what's called the Privy Council Met. Uh, it's a group of top advisors to the king, sort of a, imagine like a very large cabinet for the president of the U.S. Uh, they meet, they go over arrangements uh, for the new reign, and then we eventually saw the new king joining that group, signing documents. Eventually today, he'll be making a total of four formal statements to the public, and going back to that part of this that's traditional, uh, heralds on horseback will collect those proclamations, post them throughout the country uh, after it is first read to the public here in London that we saw and here's what we heard from the king a short time ago. My mother gave an example of lifelong love and of selfless service. My mother's reign was unequaled in its duration, its dedication and its devotion. Even as we grieve, we give thanks for this most faithful life. In taking up these responsibilities, I shall strive to follow the inspiring example I have been set. Again, many of the ceremonies we're seeing today truly do harken back to another era dating back many, many centuries. What is new is much of this is being televised. Aspects of the ceremony were never seen publicly before. Now all of it's being televised and broadcast to the world in real time. Uh, in terms of an eventual coronation, that is some time away. We're looking at several months for the king. Uh, in the case of his mother, it happened 16 months after her father died. Uh, as you can imagine, Pat, the coronation takes a lot of planning, so it's something that doesn't happen immediately. 
absolutely, Gus. I, and, you know, I'm, I'm struck by the number of people who have gathered outside Buckingham Palace and, and their reaction to the new king. I mean, the Queen Elizabeth II was beloved. Even people who didn't like the institution had a soft spot for her. But Charles had a different relationship with the public. Uh, how are you seeing them respond to him as he does his walkabouts and as he makes his way uh, from St. James Palace over to Buckingham, back to Buckingham, et cetera? Uh, uh, walkabouts, uh, that phrase we're hearing a lot. Uh, and in fact, I think we have a live view of what's going on at Buckingham Palace right now. It, in terms of the atmosphere, uh, it's very positive. Uh, as you say, not, not everyone necessarily here is a strict royalist, but there's great respect for the institution, for the process, certainly uh, for the Queen as well. I think at this point, you see a lot of people gathering. They're paying their respects, uh, gathering and sharing stories, and reflecting upon this moment in history that everyone is uh, sharing, Pat. So much so, Gus, uh, and here at home as well. Thank you so much for your perspective, and we'll see you in a little bit. You bet. And here at home, New Yorkers are continuing to mourn the death of the Queen or mark her passing. They've been leaving flowers, paying their respects outside the British consulate here. And among them, a man who had no connection to the U.K., but came from Brooklyn to lay a bouquet of flowers. It's moved people all around the world, and I don't know, I think that's really what moved me more than anything. Something like the king, like the, and you're like, the king, what? You know, and it's, 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 it's strange. Now, among those visiting the consulate, New York City Mayor Eric Adams, who also left flowers and signed a condolence book yesterday. And our coverage of the Queen's passing and the new king continues around the clock on NBCNewYork.com. We'll also check in with Gus throughout the morning. And you can look for news force Natalie Pascarella. Her reports begin tonight on our broadcasts at 6 and 11. In other news this morning, after more than a week of warnings, tenants at an East Village housing complex who were told not to drink the water, well, now the city is reversing course. It now says that the water that was sampled at the Jacob Reese houses never contained arsenic, and tenants are demanding answers. This was a community meeting last night. Tempers flared this after the city revealed that the original samples that were linked to last week's positive test for arsenic were retested this week and came back negative. The Illinois based lab behind the initial test is confirming that it did deliver inaccurate results and it also admitted to introducing arsenic to the samples that had been collected from the building. We're going to spend a lot of energy over the coming days and weeks figuring out exactly what happened. I don't think that is true. We heard here tonight people saying, residents saying, that they went to their doctors and they found arsenic. Tenants, so skeptical, skeptical rather, are still being urged to use bottled water until additional testing gives the all clear. The city has signaled that it will take legal action against that laboratory. And happening soon, the New York City Labor Day Parade is going to march down the streets or up the streets in Midtown. We can today in New York's Miles Miller is live. He's along the parade route. And Miles, thousands of people expected to come out, including the mayor and the governors, who celebrate Labor Day almost a week later. <laughs> Yeah, that's right, Pat. Even though Labor Day has come and gone, this is the annual celebration of New York City's municipal workforce and, of course, those who are part of the trades and the unions that keep this city moving. You can see a lot of them had gathered here. These are the folks from Labor's International Union 79. Uh, they do a lot of the work with hazardous materials, asbestos removal, that kind of stuff, Liuna, here uh, in New York City. But, of course, this is the first parade since its pandemic pause in 2020. It'll also be the 140th anniversary of the first Labor Day parade in the United States. And as such, Labor Secretary Marty Walsh will lead the parade as Grand Marshal, as you said, alongside Mayor Eric Adams and Governor Kathy Hochul. We know that it kicks off at 10 a.m. right here at 44th Street, and marchers will head up Fifth Avenue to 64th Street. This comes as workers at a Amazon facility on Staten Island voted to unionize and the National Labor Relations Board sided with more than 2,600 workers at JFK 8. The National Labor Relations Board says that the historic union vote should be upheld and they recommended uh, that Amazon's objections be rejected. Uh, Amazon, of course, uh, has been fighting this for some time, but yes, the Amazon union is one of the newest unions here and they'll be part of this parade. Back now to a live picture here on 44th Street, you see that there 
there are the floats. They're uh, getting ready to, uh, you know, get together. Everybody's going to uh, talk before they make their way up Fifth Avenue in celebration of labor, which really plays a major role in every part of New York City. Pat, as you know, plays a major role in getting this show on the air this morning. We're live in Midtown. I'm Miles Miller. I'll send it back to you. Absolutely, Miles, and we appreciate him. Thank you so much. And we're going to turn now to the U.S. Open at Flushing Meadows. American Francis Tiafoe's incredible run has come to a tough end in the men's semifinals. 19-year-old Spanish sensation Carlos Alcaraz put on a shot-making clinic. After Tiafoe took the first set, Alcaraz easily captured the second, the third, and the fifth and eliminated TFO. Alcaraz will now face Norway's Casper Rudd in the final tomorrow. He's looking to become the youngest Grand Slam champion since Rafael Nadal did the same back in 2005 at the French Open. And coming up on Today in New York, Derek Jeter comes back to the Bronx, the Hall of Fame tribute to a Yankee legend. Plus, on the eve of the 21st anniversary of September 11th, construction continues at the World Trade Center site. We'll show you the projects that are still underway. And stay on the shore, please. How much longer this risk for rip currents could last on this nice, sunny weekend, Vi? Yeah, better safe than sorry, even though the weather is great. Expecting plenty of sunshine today from the city to the beaches. But notice how clouds start to move in tonight, and that's going to be ahead of our next chance for rain. Coming up, we're going to time that out for you. We'll see how quickly the rain moves in and how quickly those temperatures will return to the 80s. That's coming up right here on Weekend Today in New York. Tomorrow marks 21 years since the terror attacks on September 11th and crews were testing those twin beams of light that echo the shape of the fallen towers for the annual tribute in light. Those lights will be illuminated at sunset tomorrow on September 11th and will fade away at sunrise on Monday morning. Well, the passage of time has seen remarkable rebuilding at the World Trade Center site since New York's darkest day. And now some of the missing pieces in the area are getting a little closer to completion. The Perelman Performing Arts Center is due to open next year. The 9-11 Memorial and Museum president says the rebuilding of lower Manhattan after the loss of nearly 3,000 lives remains an emotional and important task. Rome wasn't built in a day and New York wasn't rebuilt in 20 years. I mean, but when you look at what has been rebuilt, it's vibrant. Among the unfinished sections of the site, two World Trade Center. It's a planned 88-story tower and it's still looking for an anchor tenant. The developer hopes to land one next year. And please tune in for our live coverage of the annual September 11th commemoration and the reading of the names of the dead tomorrow morning here on News 4 beginning at 8. Well, as we speak, there is a rip current warning along the New Jersey shore as a hurricane churns way out in the Atlantic, two of them in fact. Powerful waves and rip currents expected to last unfortunately for the next several days and officials are urging people to please stay out of the water, particularly if a lifeguard is not on duty. And that is likely to be in many places because September Labor Day weekend marks sort of the unofficial end of summer, and a lot of lifeguards are gone by yeah, this time of year. So. It's that time of year, so we've got to be extra careful, especially when the weather is nice. I mm -hmm. think it's actually a great time to enjoy the beach. They're less crowded, but a good day to also stay out of the mm -hmm. water. So best to enjoy it from the sand, I think, as we head into this afternoon. And that high rip current risk, and not only present in New Jersey, but extends all the way out through Long Island as well. So as we mentioned, the best advice is to just stay out of the surf. Again, uh, the currents are so strong that they could really uh, impact even the best Best of swimmers. So it's really important that, of course, you're being more safe than sorry. Now, of course, uh, part of this, thanks to Hurricane Earl in the distant Atlantic right now, still a category two hurricane winds is sustained of 105 miles per hour. Again, this is already east of Maine, uh, east of Atlantic Canada. So this is very far, but still having an impact and still causing that ripple effect along the eastern seaboard. So again, a great day to enjoy outdoors. We're expecting sunshine and at our beaches, temperatures in the upper 70s to low 80s. But uh, you do want to make sure you're being 
being extra careful. Not only that, it's going to be the better day of the weekend. Showers will return slowly as we head into your Sunday. Now, let's take a look around the boroughs right now. We're at 61 degrees still in Staten Island, one of the cool spots. Queens at 70 already, 67 in the Bronx, 69 in Brooklyn. That nice clear sky after a cool start. Temperatures will be coming up into the mid 80s, so a warm afternoon, still feeling very summer like. High pressure is moving out, and you can see we have two disturbances, one to our south and another off to our west. So this will be the beginning of a more unsettled pattern that's going to begin tomorrow and continue for a couple of days. So let's take a look at your hour by hour forecast. Today looks quiet. By tonight, clouds start building in, so I do think Sunday We'll see those cloudy skies from very early on. Showers still approaching from the west, so by late afternoon and into the evening, we'll start to see more numerous showers. I think for the city, it'll probably start moving in late afternoon or into the evening hours. But heavier rain expected Sunday night into early Monday. Here's 5 o'clock raining very heavily out toward Long Island. Before this clears out briefly, I think we'll get a bit of a lull as we head into Monday afternoon before another round of showers and thunderstorms moves in from Monday night into Tuesday. And we'll need to be careful careful with locally heavy rain that could trigger some localized flooding, especially since we're still in these drought conditions it makes it difficult for the ground to absorb that water forecast for today. 85 after a cool start summer like conditions for today heading into tonight, dropping down to 69 with clouds on the increase. The rain does hold off though until Sunday afternoon. It'll be a cooler day too with those temperatures in the upper 70s and then a couple of rounds of showers and thunderstorms that will stick with us as we head into Monday and Tuesday. Pat, back to you. Okay, Vi, thank you. Well, it is that time of the morning where we'd like to check in with sports. Here's Bruce Beck with the Yankees' special tribute to the captain, Derek Jeter. Good morning, everyone. Derek Jeter was back in the Bronx on Friday night for just the second time in the last five years. And the Yankees honored him for his induction into the Baseball Hall of Fame, which took place just over a year ago. The captain was showered with love by the fans at the stadium. He rode into the pregame ceremony on a golf cart with his family. Jeter's former manager, Joe Torrey, and many of his old teammates were in the house, along with his plaque from Cooperstown. Derek threw out the ceremonial first pitch, but it was not much. He threw a softball from in front of the mound. His speech was a lot better. You know, as you guys all know, I, I was born in New Jersey. I grew up in Kalamazoo. I live now down in Miami. But right here in front of you, with you, is where I really feel like I'm at home. Even Jeter's presence couldn't spark the slump of Yankees against the Rays. In the third, Aaron Hicks' struggles continue. He strands two men with his second strikeout of the game. And it got worse for the Yankees veteran. In the top of the fourth, Wander Franco drives one deep to left. Hicks gets to the ball, but it falls out of his glove. Hicks thinks it's a foul ball and stops playing it, but it was fair, and two runs come around to score. The next batter, Randy Arozarena, hits one towards Hicks and left, and he can't come up with it. Aaron Boone pulled him after the inning, with the Yankees leading four zip. The Bombers rallied in the ninth, but with the tying run at the plate, Glaber Torres flies out to the wall in right. He gave it a pretty good ride, but the Yankees lose 4-2. Their lead over Tampa is just three and a half games. The Mets were in Miami to open a three-game series with the Marlins. And Pete Alonso went yard in the top of the sixth inning. The Polar Bear smacking his 33rd homer of the season. A two-run shot to left. It cut Miami's lead to 4-3. But in the bottom of the eighth, Charles LeBlanc uncorks a two-run homer of his own off Joely Rodriguez to give Miami a three-run lead. The Marlins would at 6-3. And this afternoon at the U.S. Open, late in the afternoon, it's the women's final. Iga Fiontech taking on Anz Jabor. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday, everyone. For Today in New York, I'm Bruce Beck. And still ahead on this Saturday morning, making hash browns for breakfast? Yeah, they are a staple in so many meals. Produce Pete's got some tips and tricks to help potatoes last longer. You're watching Weekend Today in New York. September 21st, TV's number one rated night of dramas returns. The more patients we're able to see, the more lives we save. Let's move in! I need all hands on deck. 
Chicago Wednesday returns September 21st on NBC. I'd like to combine forces and work this case together. Arms, drugs, sex trafficking. It's beyond comprehension. We keep fighting together. This Labor Day, brighten your home with Cabot Exterior Stains and HGTV Home by Sherwin-Williams Paints. And now, buy one, get one 50% off via rebate. Shop Labor Day savings today. When safe drivers save for not answering their phone while driving, they feel like a big deal. Did you get the ice? Even if they forgot the ice. Huh. Save up to 30% on auto insurance with USAA Safe Pilot. Get a quote today. Consumer Cellular has the best customer service. They care about the customer. The best price with the best quality. The prices, the coverage. The coverage is great. It was the same, if not better. Consumer Cellular provides the exact same premium coverage as the nation's leading carriers for half the cost. Switch to Consumer Cellular and get talk, text, and data starting at just $20 a month. It's like four scoops of ice cream for the price of one. Switch today and get a 100% risk-free guarantee. Call or go online. There's a different way to treat HIV. It's every other month injectable Cabinuva. For adults who are undetectable, Cabinuva is the only complete HIV treatment you can get every other month. Cabinuva helps keep me undetectable. It's two injections given by my healthcare provider every other month. It's one less thing to think about while traveling. HIV pills aren't on my mind. A quick change in my plans is no big deal. Don't receive Cabinuva if you're allergic to its ingredients or taking certain medicines which may interact with Cabinuva. Serious side effects include allergic reactions, post-injection reactions, liver problems, and depression. If you have a rash and other allergic reaction symptoms, stop Cabinuva and get medical help right away. Tell your doctor if you have liver problems or mental health concerns, and if you are pregnant, breastfeeding, or considering pregnancy. Some of the most common side effects include injection site reactions, fever, and tiredness. If you switch to Cabinuva, attend all treatment appointments. Every other month, and I'm good to go. Ask your doctor about every other month Cabinuva. Well, if your weekend plans may include a trip to Coney Island, you'll want to hear this. And if they don't, you may want to reconsider because there is a new family friendly roller coaster out at Coney Island's Luna, Luna Park. It's called Tony's Express and it reaches speeds of more than 30 miles an hour or more than 1,200 feet of track. It also honors the first roller coaster ever built in America, the Switchback Railway, with its vehicle design. Well, they are super versatile and super filling. Today, we're learning all about potatoes with Produce Pete. Hey, good morning. Well, today I was supposed to be out in the field, but because of the rain, I had to do something a little different. So what did I decide to do? I decided to come to Stu Leonard's, that's right. Right now, I'm at Stu Leonard's in their newest store in Paramus, and what are we talking about is potatoes. So why potatoes? Well, we all know that potatoes are always the most least expensive or the cheapest item. But this year, especially, and ever since the pandemic started, what happened was that the potatoes got to be very, very expensive. So when you're in the store or your supermarket and you see they're expensive, you go, why are they expensive? Well, number one is because of the pandemic. Number two is because what happened was that there's been not enough rain and there's been weather conditions. So that's what happened. So as long as potatoes are expensive, let me show you how to pick the right potato. Now the first potato and the most popular potato is what we call a russet potato or russet Idaho. You want to look for a nice russet color on the potato. This is an all-purpose potato. You can use this potato for, for mashing, you can use it for french fries, you can use it for, for uh, a million different things, but I'm telling you, one of the really, really good potatoes. Now, with potatoes, what happens is a lot of people look at potatoes and they say to themselves, you know, um, they look for that green tint in the potatoes. Now, why do potatoes have a green tint in them? Well, potatoes have a green tint for one reason and one reason only. That's the light. A lot of people think that that green tint uh, that's in the potatoes is poor. <laughs> Some people in old wives' tales say that it's poison. Well, it's not poison. It just means that the potato is bitter. When mom, when mom used to bring potatoes home, where did she store the potatoes? She would store them underneath the, underneath the sink. And when you went to the supermarket, you never saw a display. Look at this beautiful display here at Stu Leonard's. You never saw a display like this. The potatoes were always underneath. Why? 
because of the light. The light turns the potatoes green. Another quick tip is when you bring potatoes home, never, never, never put them in the refrigerator because what happens is if you put potatoes in the refrigerator, the starch in the potatoes turns to sugar. And that's why when you cut a potato in half or you cut a potato, what happens is that you get that little blackness on the inside. That's not bad, anything bad. That's sugar on the inside. The starch turns to sugar. So that's what it is. So there's a lot of different kinds of potatoes. Now you got the Idaho potatoes. Now you look at potatoes here. Now here's another really, really popular potato right here. And these are the Yukon gold potatoes. When buying these potatoes, you want them to be nice and white. That's the most important thing. Now here's another potato that's very, very popular. The red potato. Now the red potato should never be peely on the outside. When you see the red potato peely on the outside, you know what happens? That means that the potatoes start to, to get old. So like I said, there's a million different types of potatoes. They come in five pound bags. They come in loose. They come a lot of different ways. But potatoes are out there this time of year. We're going into the winter time. We're going to when we use a lot of potatoes. So whether you use the Idaho, the red potato, the Yukon gold, or even the regular potatoes. There's a million potatoes out there. They're all good, and I'm telling you, come to Stu's because look at this, this display. He's got a beautiful display. I'm Produce Feet reminding you that if you eat right, you're gonna live right. And don't forget, there's a lot of potatoes out there, and you know what? They're really good for you. I'll see you next week, hopefully from the farm. And remember, you can email your questions to Pete at the farm or anywhere else at this address. It's produce.pete at NBCUNI.com. You can also find them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We'll be right back. Right now at 9, it is official. Early this morning, Charles III was proclaimed King of the United Kingdom. We are live in London with the oath that he took and what's next for the new king. Plus, New York City's Labor Day Parade is back, set to kick off in less than an hour. We're live along that parade route. And Storm Team 4, tracking your weekend forecast. The nice weather we've been having is on its way out. We're getting some rain, though, no? and we need it. Violetta Yas is tracking those changes for us. She'll be along in a second. Good morning, and welcome to Weekend Today in New York on this Saturday. It's the 10th of September. I'm Pat Battle. Our Gus Rosendale is live. He is in London for us this morning. Good morning, Gus. Good morning, Pat. Good morning, everybody. The official proclamation for the king made here just a short time ago. It is a bit of a moment of celebration during what is very a solemn period here. And we'll have a full report on that coming up in just a few. All right. We'll see you then. Thank you, Gus. And now let's get that forecast with Storm Team 4's Violetta Yas. Vi, we have been waiting for some rain. Got a little bit last week. Is this going to be a, a soaker the next few days or, or just a touch? We could at least have a couple of hours of some nice, good rain. So we're looking forward to that for sure. Ahead of that, temperature still quite high as we head into this afternoon. Right now we're at 69 in the city, just barely making it to 60 far north and west in Monticello. They woke up in the 50s in places like the Hudson Valley out into parts of northern New Jersey as well. So a cool start, but overall warming nicely. Newark already at 74 degrees, and we're expecting that nice blue sky this afternoon. A beautiful day expected, still very summer-like considering we are now in early September. But notice how those rain chances do increase beginning with tomorrow and continuing into your Monday and Tuesday. So beautiful today, but clouds will be on the increase tonight and to, into Sunday before the shower chances return in the afternoon and evening. And they're going to stick around for a little bit. So coming up, we'll see how much rain Rain. We could get into early next week, and I'll have your full forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes. Pat, thanks, bye. We want to go back overseas now to Gus Rosendale, who is in London for us. And this morning, of course, Gus, Charles was proclaimed king in that formal ceremony, but there are a full 10 days of protocols and, and procedures that are going on. What's in works for the rest of the weekend for the king, the new king? 
Well, so many ceremonies going on, and uh, you talk about that ceremony, Pat. This is a first, uh, a major first, the first time we've seen the uh, ceremony in its entirety uh, being televised, live streamed. This is the era we live in. The entire world is seeing what we're seeing right now, and again, that is a first. Just a short while ago, we saw the official proclamation read after it was issued at St. James's Palace. Uh, king Charles III, officially now named king. I, I say officially because, of course, he assumed that role after his mother's passing immediately. Uh, you can hear there the crowd singing, God save the king. Uh, that is a new phrase people here are getting used to. Also, a cannon salute for the king just a short while ago. Now, earlier this morning, this is the part of the ceremony uh, I mentioned never having been seen before. This has always been done in private. The new king meeting with and addressing what's called the Privy Council. That's a, a group of top political and religious leaders who oversee and sanction this transition. King Charles today will make four formal declarations today, and here's what some of what he said earlier. In carrying out the heavy task that has been laid upon me, and to which I now dedicate what remains to me of my life, I pray for the guidance and help of Almighty God. Now, the proclamation uh, will be posted, and then it will also be spread across the country by heralds on horseback. There you have that throwback to tradition. But, Pat, then and now, today is about visibility for the new monarch, getting the word out there. And to that end, we do expect the king and the queen consort to be doing another walkabout outside Buckingham Palace in just a few hours. Gus, we're also struck here uh, on this side of the pond by, by what's happening across the sea. And I think, that, I think a question on a lot of people's minds might be how Charles is being perceived by the new public. I, I actually saw people, you know, the queen, nobody could touch the queen. She would wave and she might occasionally shake a hand or take a flower. But I actually saw people reaching out, touching his hand, kissing his hand, even one woman kissing him on the cheek. Does that signal, do you think, a, a, a change in the way that he plans to reign? Oh, I think very much so. I mean, you, you hear the phrase modern monarchy, and uh, King Charles is definitely a part of that. Accessibility is, is a big part of that. You talk about sort of that distance that has been in the past. Uh, that's not now. Uh, the king making a point to walk among the people, to shake hands, uh, to kiss and to hug. It's something that maybe is uh, very American uh, to you and me, but it's something that's kind of new. The idea that you could really touch your king is new. And we're seeing that as people gather, not just here in Buckingham Palace, but also up at Balmoral, where the queen remains before she is is brought here later this week. This is very much a time of transition, very much a time of people gathering, reflecting on the past. But Pat, it's a very good point you make, also looking to the future and the inevitable changes that will come uh, to the monarchy. Yeah, it, it, it's sort of, it, it's almost odd because they're grieving the loss of the queen and not quite celebrating the new reign uh, of the king. It's a very delicate balance, uh, both for the public and for, I, I would imagine, King Charles, very publicly grieving his mother, but yet taking on the mantle of leadership in that country. You hear the phrase over the years, keep calm and carry on, a very mm -hmm. British phrase, and it's very much the sentiment here right now. You have this major metropolitan area here in London as we take a live look at Buckingham Palace, a major metropolis, and yet there is this some sort of subdued feeling to the air. I can't say it's devastation, but it's just a matter of respect and people contemplating what has been and what may will come uh, in the future. This is a period uh, for this entire country, perhaps even much of the world, where people are really just kind of taking stock. It is, uh, to use the phrase, a very historical moment. Indeed it is. Gus Rosendale, thank you so much for your reporting. We will see you in a little bit. Be well. And our coverage of the Queen's passing continues around the clock here on NBC and on NBCNewYork.com. Gus will be back with us tomorrow morning. And you can look for News 4's Natalie Pascarella's reports. They begin tonight at our 6 and 11 o'clock broadcasts. Well, back here at home, the New York City Labor Day Parade kicks off soon in Midtown. Weekend today in New York's Miles Miller's live. He is along the parade route and Miles, the crowds are already out. Yeah, you know, right now we're standing near uh, Layuna, which has Local 78 and, so, and Local 79 here in New York. They represent 40,000 people in New York State uh, and uh, about 20,000 in the city. And they are the folks who do most of the construction work here. You can see they're all lined up behind me. They'll take to their positions around 10 o'clock, uh, and they'll be joined by the Labor Secretary, Marty Walsh, when they make their way up Fifth Avenue. This is, of course, 
announce a parade comeback. Uh, the parade was canceled for the last few years because of the pandemic, and so it is back in a big way and for good measure because, of course, this is the 140th year of this parade, and they have some new folks joining them, specifically the Amazon Labor Union. We know that they were certified by the National Labor Relations Board, uh, and now it means that uh, they are unionized at JFK. Uh, at JFK 8, which is in Staten Island. So uh, they are the newest members of the Central Labor, uh, Labor Commission, uh, which is uh, who is hosting this parade. We do expect the mayor and governor to be here uh, later this morning to join in with those folks who are uh, taking part of this parade. And you've got folks from all parts of uh, city life, whether it be the folks who are putting up the buildings here, whether it be the folks who are doing the works in our parks, cops, firefighters, sanitation, all of them uh, in city service and even in private enterprise, a lot of them in this city are laborers and they help this city move and they will be making their way up Fifth Avenue in just about an hour. And that's where we're live. I'm Miles Miller. Today in New York, back to you. All right, Miles, thank you so much. Well, the fallout continues over the FBI search of former President Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate down in Florida. Trump and the Department of Justice each proposing candidates to serve as special master. Well, the Justice Department proposed retired judges Barbara S. Jones and Thomas B. Griffith, while Trump's legal team proposed former federal judge Raymond Deary and former general counsel Paul Huck Jr. Both sides are going to respond to the proposed candidates on Monday. In the meantime, a judge has ruled to temporarily block parts of the Justice Department's investigation. But the Justice Department's appealing that ruling, saying that the classified documents do not fall under the former president's personal records. And the U.S. Supreme Court has intervened, granting an emergency request from Yeshiva University to deny official recognition to an LGBTQ student club. Earlier this summer, a state judge ruled that the school is required to recognize a group called the Pride Alliance under the city's human rights law. But according to the university, recognizing the alliance contradicts its religious beliefs and also amounts to an unconstitutional infringement on its religious freedom. An attorney for the school praises the justice's intervention, calling it, quote, a common sense ruling. A lawyer for the Pride Alliance, though, says the group remains committed to creating a safe space for LGBTQ students on the campus of Yeshiva University. Justice Sonia Sotomayor says the order granting the yeshiva's emergency request will remain in effect pending further order. The MTA is touting record ridership on New York City subways since the start of the pandemic. According to the authority statistics, more than 3.6 million people rode trains on Thursday. That's about 63% of a typical day prior to March of 2020 in the start of the pandemic. CEO Jano Lieber says he's encouraged by the increase in ridership during the first full week of the month. And so to come on this Saturday morning, a survivor of the attacks on September 11th has just completed a lifelong goal. See his inspiring journey that's been decades in the making. And we'll have another check of your forecast from Storm Team 4. You're watching Weekend Today in New York. Tomorrow, of course, we will mark a somber anniversary, 21 years since the September 11th terror attacks. And each year leading up to the anniversary, we like to share stories of survivors whose lives were forever changed that day. This includes a New Jersey lawyer who escaped from the World Trade Center and just this week fulfilled a promise made in the aftermath of the tragedy. Weekend Today in New York's Adam Harding has his story. Bye. I felt like I did things that I haven't done in a long time. For best friends Jeff Chancellor and Tom Kirkwood, it was a chance to finish what they started. Here they are 50 years ago, teenagers trying to canoe from their home in Illinois down to New Orleans. We couldn't believe that we did it, for one thing, because we were only 17 and 18 years old at the time. Their trip back then was cut short. They ran out of steam, but decades later, they were determined to see it through. About a year and a half ago, we were together doing something. I don't remember what, but we said, you know, it's coming up on the 50th year when we did our first trip. and We thought this would be a great time to do it. This time they hopped on board a 24 by 8 pontoon, took the Ohio River to the Mississippi. 
for 12 days. This is day four of our Mississippi trip. They chronicled their adventure on social media. Tom and I have been friends since elementary school. Until they made it. August 29th, 840. Finally. New Orleans, baby, 1,070 miles later. It was their second chance, something Jeff knows about all too well. I was in the North Tower uh, on the 28th floor uh, in the building when the first plane hit. He was living in the tri-state area at the time and survived the attack on 9-11. People ask me this all the time. Um, you know, I don't have any particularly profound insights into it, but it did, I think, kind of reaffirm in my mind the importance of when you have opportunities to take them when you need when you have an opportunity to stretch yourself a little bit to get out of your comfort zone when you have an opportunity to do something that's that's fun that's enjoyable you should really you should really do it and they are taking advantage of every opportunity together what was that moment when you finally got there <laughs> it was a high five in the harbor of uh, new orleans was it worth it Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Now it's time for their next great adventure, wherever that may take them. I'm Adam Harding, News 4, New York. Well, we have been talking a lot about drought conditions throughout our area. Now, the lack of rain this summer could affect our usually vibrant fall foliage. Autumn colors could be patchy in some places, significantly shorter in others, maybe dull, yucky. Experts say the season, which typically peaks in October, could be more spread out, too, with some trees changing earlier, even browning and dropping their leaves prior to the big, colorful display that we all love and enjoy. What's it's, Yeah, it's a bummer. This drought is just whack. Yeah. I happened to be in <laughs> California last week for the heat wave. Oh, OMG. Boy. 106. Yeah. Oh, man. It's uh, been brutal over there. Yeah. They are dealing with even worse drought conditions across a pretty big chunk of the western U.S. Yeah. So, um, fortunately, many of us dealing with this. Luckily for us, we did get some beneficial yes. rain recently, and hopefully we have a little bit more on the way for places like Newark. Here's some of the uh, sort of uh, rain deficit that we've seen in one of our bigger reporting stations here across the tri-state area. Normally between June 1st and now, so season to date, they'll have more than 13 inches of rain during that time. This year, just under five. So just a fraction of what they would normally get during this time. Meanwhile, last year, 20 inches, uh, 20 and a half inches really during that same stretch uh, of the year. So really an incredible change, not only only from normal and an incredible departure from normal, but also an incredible departure from the amount of rain that they saw just last year. So no surprises here again, much of the western and central U.S. dealing with drought conditions in many places, severe drought. We saw that severe area, rather the extreme area where you would normally see the red in Connecticut from the week prior. You can see that has really diminished. They got some incredible rainfall totals up there with our last rain event, uh, but for much of the area still dealing with severe or at minimum moderate drought conditions. But you can see we do have some rain off to our south and west. Two disturbances here. We'll, we'll see our chances for rain increase as we head into tomorrow. So tonight it really just starts to get cloudy and we'll be off to a cloudy start from very early on Sunday. Here's eight o'clock in the morning. You can see clouds dominating the area with showers already approaching from the west. I do think these hold off until later in the afternoon or practically the evening for the city, but you'll see that rain a little earlier in places like North Jersey and into the Hudson Valley. Now heavier rain starts to move in as we head into Sunday night. So overnight, I think we'll get a nice good soaking and then Monday we'll get a bit of a lull before we get additional showers and thunderstorms to start to move in as we head into uh, Monday night and also into Tuesday. So how much rain? Generally, we're talking half an inch to an inch, but I do think in some spots in the heavier downpours, maybe we see up to an inch or a little bit more. So again, very needed at this time, and we'll get a little bit of an unsettled period here as we head back to work on Monday and Tuesday as well. That clears out, though, and the sunshine returns as we head into Wednesday and Thursday with still a couple of days of temperatures in the 80s here in your exclusive 10-day forecast. Pat, back to you. Okay, bye. Thank you. And still ahead on this Saturday morning, Broadway Week begins. In all your fantasies. Just ahead, we'll tell you how you can score some deals to see some of the hottest shows on the Great White Way. You're watching Weekend Today in New York. Monk. 
Bones, two of the greatest crime shows in TV history. They really should be together. Done. Monk and Bones are both coming to Cozy TV. This just keeps getting better. Monk and Bones, coming October 3rd to Cozy TV. Join Planet Fitness today and get more epic energy and better sleep with tons of equipment in our clean and spacious clubs. Join for $1 down, $10 a month, cancel anytime. Deal ends Wednesday, September 14th. Your home is your world. Make it everything you've dreamed with Exterior Solutions by James Hardy. With Hardy Fiber Cement Products, the design possibilities are endless. Call or go online to get started. Explore design ideas, textures, and over 700 color plus finishes for lasting beauty. Transform your home. It's possible with James Hardy. Call or go online today. I've been into fashion since I can remember. But one day I had a stomach ache so bad I didn't want to do anything. The team at New York Presbyterian said it was actually my heart. It was severely swollen something called myocarditis. But doctors gave me medicines and used machines to control my heartbeat. They saved me. So now I can become the next great fashion designer. Join Planet Fitness today and get more epic energy and better sleep with tons of equipment in our clean and spacious clubs. Join for $1 down, $10 a month, cancel anytime. Deal ends Wednesday, September 14th. I'm a traffic geek. Introducing Adele Caballero. Traffic reporting in the tri-state area is such a rush. And now I get to be a part of this team. I'm a human GPS. I can't help it. Adele Caballero, part of your new morning team on Today in New York. Well, we are still like six weeks from Halloween, but already we're talking about the holidays. Why? Because happening now, UPS is looking for more than 100,000 seasonal workers. The pay rates will depend on the position and the location, but UPS says that workers can earn as much as $30 an hour. You can fill out an application online, should you so desire. The company says that a majority of the positions will not even require an interview. Last year, nearly 35,000 holiday season employees earned permanent positions with UPS, with delivery drivers making an average of $95,000 a year. And we've got some big news for you thespians out there. Broadway week is going on right now, and it means two-for-one tickets are up for grabs. But the name may be misleading because the biannual event actually lasts for most of the month. Weekend Today in New York's Ida Siegel has a preview of what the Great White Way has to offer. Outside the Phantom of the Opera, ticket holders lined up, unaware that inside they would be greeted by the mayor of New York. Here to promote the return of Broadway's biggest bargain. This great two for one ticket allowing you to come with someone you love or someone you dislike and just come and enjoy a great, great performance. He's talking about Broadway Week, the popular program that offers two for one tickets. I'm excited. I'm happy. It's a blessing because we were in a pandemic for so long. So right now we can get out and enjoy our favorite things we want to do. And Broadway is definitely one to be at. Broadway week is actually two and a half weeks long. It lasts from Tuesday, September 6th through Sunday, September 25th. 21 shows are participating this year. So you're going to start ticket shopping or what are you thinking? As soon as I get home. Wicked, Beetlejuice for this one, and Lion King, absolutely. I three. So you're thinking three? Yes. Why not? Why not? Take advantage. <laughs> In all your fantasy. Broadway week traditionally happens twice a year, but it's been three years since they've offered the discount program because of COVID. It's nice Broadway's coming back, but what I'm really worried about is the off-off Broadway theaters because a lot of them are not back. So I really hope that the rich don't keep getting richer and we, we got to help out these smaller theaters because that's where it's at. It's showtime. The mayor says getting Broadway going full steam ahead has positive ripple effects. When the lights are on in Broadway, the lights are on in America. We are resilient. We are formidable. This fall marks one year since Broadway slowly reopened after being completely shut down during COVID. Now these Broadway week tickets are already on sale. There are some blackout dates to be aware of. Reporting from the Theater District, Ida Siegel, News 4, New York. And still more ahead here this morning, including a final look at the forecast with Storm Team 4's Violetta Yas. 
You are watching Weekend Stay New York. Have you seen my new phone yet? It's like folds in half. I would never switch to Samsung. I love my phone. What? Folds in half. You see, I love my phone. I would never switch to Samsung. <laughs> This Labor Day, brighten your home with Cabot Exterior Stains and HGTV Home by Sherwin-Williams Paints. And now, buy one, get one 50% off via rebate. Shop Labor Day savings today. Here, have a Triscuit. Bring on the zest with fire-roasted tomato and olive oil. Bring it with Triscuit. Why hide your skin if Dupixin has your moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis under control? Hide my skin? Not me. Because Dupixin targets a root cause of eczema, it helps heal your skin from within, keeping you one step ahead of it. Hide my skin? Not me. And for kids ages six months and up, that means clearer skin and noticeably less itch. With Dupixin, you can change how their skin looks and feels. And that's the kind of change you notice. Hide my skin, not me. Serious allergic reactions can occur that can be severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems such as eye pain or vision changes, including blurred vision, joint aches and pain, or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines without talking to your doctor. When you help heal your skin from within, you can show more with less eczema. Talk to your child's eczema specialist about Dupixin, a breakthrough eczema treatment. Live look there at the George Washington Bridge as some traffic appears there heading toward the upper level. Uh, be advised if you're going that way. And for the first time in 20 years, if you're going maybe up to Connecticut, you can tour an historic lighthouse. Norwalk Green's alleged lighthouse was built in 1902 and it just got a $2 million restoration. The lighthouse features several floors, including a kitchen, two bedrooms, a bath, and a watch room. And tours are set for September 17th and 18th. Tickets, by the way, 60 bucks. All right. Beautiful day to be near the water, but not in the water. Yes. Danger. Very important. It's a better day to enjoy out by the sand because the water is rough. We've got a, a hurricane out in the open Atlantic, and even though it's very far away, still causing some very high swells and a high risk for rip current. So please be careful out there. Uh, but the day looks wonderful. Sunny skies and warm temperatures. You can see showers return as we head into Sunday, and it'll kind of be on and off for a couple of days, so a bit unsettled mm -hmm. for early in the week, but you can see it looks a one Wonderful once we hit Wednesday. Not only does the sun return, but temperatures back into the low 80s. Love it. Thank you so much. Bye. And thank you for spending this part of your Saturday morning with us, folks. I'll be back for our broadcast tonight at 6 p.m. and 11. And you can get updates online anytime at NBCNewYork.com. For Gus, Raphael, and all of us here at NBC, go out and make it a great day. Thanks for having us in for news. Sorry, you couldn't make it. It's me, Kelly. Oh, hey, whatever. <laughs> Go All the stories. You were a bouncer? For three years. You're so nice. I am the meanest person. <laughs> you are so full of it. And all the songs. Operator, won't you put me on through? I gotta send my love down to Baton Rouge. It's season four. And I have the best <laughs> job ever. New season starts Monday at 3 on NBC for New York. It's me.